So if you could please put your Penn State email into the chat box for me just for some attendance purposes. This week we are going to be talking about confidence intervals. So um, we'll kind of do a basis about confidence intervals and then get more in depth on how we're going to, um, how we do use them in statistics. So um, first idea, we do want to figure out what is a confidence interval. So um, it's basically a way that we get a range of data um, and then we try to say, you know, we're this much percent confident that something, um, you know, we're this much percent confident that the data that we're looking for relies, you know, lies in between these two numbers. You'll have a lower bound and an upper bound. And the way that you um, do this uh, test of inference is to, like this is a manual way to do it. So you have your point estimate plus or, plus or minus your multiplier and then times your standard error. So this is our basic equation that we use for confidence intervals. And then, you know, as you remember, we have um, population proportions and population means. So this is the first example here for um, if we're talking about um, population proportions. This is how you would um, set up that same general equation, but in terms of sample proportions. Um, so you have your sample proportion plus or minus, uh, Z star is gonna be the multiplier from that uh, general equation. And then here is your standard error. So I showed you down here, your standard error is basically the standard deviation of your sample. Um, so here's your, like what we would use before, like the normal standard deviation equation. And then um, basically, like I said, standard error is the same thing, except you use a sample proportion and not a population proportion. So that's really the main difference there. Um, so that is the equation you'd use for confidence intervals for a population proportion. And then um, confidence intervals for population mean, we have um, the standard error of the mean, which is, so it's the same setup as the last one, but I just wanted to show you here, the only difference in it, uh, you know, is that our standard error is gonna be different here. And um, so you have, you know, your S divided by your square root of N. All right, and then, like I said, you know, your confidence intervals here, you have your standard error for a difference. So this is if you have more than one, um, proportion or more than one mean. Um, so this would be, in this case, you would have um, standard error of a difference. You wanna just make sure you use that same equation for a standard error. So if you only had one, you'd use like this left side of the equation. But since we have two, you just wanna make sure you add the second one in there. And then you use this equation right down here in the standard error part of your uh, general confidence interval equation. And then your um, point estimate is gonna be the difference between the samples because remember we do have two of them here. And then keep in mind, in order to do this, um, it does have to be independent. So that is something also to think about. Okay, and then when we get to, you know, when we find our um, confidence interval and we're trying to decide, you know, if what we found is statistically significant, basically what we want to do is see if the confidence intervals overlap or, um, and that, or if they contain zero. So if they don't overlap, then we can say it's statistically significant because that means that, um, you know, that, so we conclude that there's a statistically significant difference in the population because they're different. They don't have anything in common. And then same thing that if it doesn't have um, zero in it, then we can say statistically significant because that means that we're not confident that the difference is zero, which means that there's no change and it's not significant. So we're pretty confident that it's not zero because it's not included in that confidence interval there. So those are two different ways that we can make those um, inferences. All right, so let's do some review questions. So I'll go ahead and read this and then read through the answers and let me know what you think it is. So our first one is consider a random sample from a population for which of the following conditions will the margin of error be the largest? So read through these answers. Let me know what you think the answer is. Type it in the chat box and we will review it then together. Okay, good, so um, remember when we have a smaller sample size and an increase in the level of confidence, um, we're gonna have the margin of error to be larger. Um, so you just wanna make sure that, you know, it's good because you said, you know, our sample size 100, that's, that's correct because we'd have a small sample size to increase that. But then the confidence level of 99%, so actually, you know, we want our answer to be A because that confidence level of 99% is gonna give us a larger standard error because you know it's, it's more spread out, like 95 would be here and 99 would be there. Um, so our answer would be A just because of that fact. Does that make sense why it would be A and not B?
All right, cool. All right, number two. So a 95% confidence interval for the difference between the mean head circumference um, of women and the mean head circumference of men is determined to be negative 1.3 centimeters to positive 1.2 centimeters. Which of the following statements is the best interpretation? So let me know what you think out of those two options. Okay, so what we want to think of here, so remember when we were talking about statistical significance. So if something's significant, we're saying that we think there's a difference in the population. So to find if something's statistically significant, we want to see if zero is contained in the interval. So here between negative 1.3 and 1.2, zero is contained in the interval. So we're not confident that um, we can't make any conclusions of that because, you know, we have this 95% confidence that our um, population proportion is within these, um, you know, these numbers, but zero is included in there, so there's a high probability that it could be that. Um, so it actually is B because we can't make that conclusion based upon the fact that zero is within the interval. So does that make sense just between like negative 1.3 and that? All right. Oops, all right. All right, um, a 95% confidence interval for the mean height of adult women is 64.2 inches to 66.2 inches. The interval is based on information from a sample of 30 women. Which of the following statements is the correct interpretation of this interval? So, you know, we have our interval. Go ahead and see which sentence um, is a good interpretation sentence for it. All right, so let's review this one together. So um, we know that the answer can't be A or B because that's saying something about 95% of the sample or women, like that's never an interpretation of the confidence interval. Um, the 95% is talking about how confident you are, not like how much of your population. So that's why it's not either of those. Um, D is not correct because you can't make a conclusion that it's between these, because that would mean it would be 100% confidence interval. You know, it would mean that you knew it was in there, but we're only 95% confident, so we can't make that conclusion. So our answer has to be C, because we're saying it's likely, because that's what the 95% is showing you, that it is likely. So our answer there would be C. Um, that one makes the most sense out of all of them. Okay, let's try one more. So suppose an unbiased random survey was conducted to find out what proportion of center county residents intended to vote in the next non-presidential election, for which of the following confidence intervals would it be fair to conclude with high confidence that a majority of residents intend to vote in the next non-presidential election? So try this one out and then we will go ahead over it.
All right, good. Yep, so our answer here is C because um, if we look at our options here, um, so we're trying to see, you know, we want to have a high level of confidence that the majority of residents are going to vote. So majority is going to be more than 50%. Um, so in the cases of A and B, we wouldn't choose that because that they both have, um, you know, lower intervals that, or lower bounds that are below 50. So, you know, that means that there's, you know, confidence that it could be below 50, which wouldn't be the majority. So, um, and then D obviously isn't correct because C is correct because that's showing you that, you know, this is, you're 95% confident that it's within this. Um, and then, so if, you, if this was a 95% confidence interval, so you're confident that it's between these two numbers. So in that case, um, we can conclude that, you know, we're pretty confident that it's going to be more than the majority um, because they're between two numbers that are greater than 50%. So good job. Okay, so like I always say, you can go ahead and watch this group review back as well as all the other ones that we've had um, on YouTube. Our next one will be already in April um, next week at 8.30, April 5th. And if you have any questions, let me know. If you could put your Penn State email in the chat box for me, that'd be awesome. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask them now. And if not, you are good to go for tonight.